We've seen how to extract particular rows out of the table based on certain conditions. Let's see how we can do a similar thing for columns. The columns, because they are typically named, allow us to uh, select them in a more direct way by simply listing the names of the columns that we want. So uh, let's start by performing the str function to get some information about the columns. So here is my description of the columns. And I can then decide which particular columns I would like to view. So for example, if I want to just look at the male and, and female columns, I can list the name of the tibble and then provide a list of the columns that I want to include. Let's go ahead and do that. I can see that my new tibble that I have created has just two columns and it only includes the data for the male and female columns. If I don't want to list every individual column, I can list a range of columns. So for example, if I want sort of this metadata about the schools going all the way from school year down to zip code and then stopping when I get to the grade um, levels, I can say a range ranging from school year to zip code and I write that uh, in this sort of rank notation. So if I do that, I can see that I do indeed get the first one, two, three, four, five, six, first six columns, which are the columns from school year over to zip code. We can also use a Boolean to select the columns, just like we could with the rows. So one of the functions that will <clears throat> produce a Boolean is the function starts with grade. So any column that starts with grade something or other, it will extract. So we can see here that there are a number of columns, grades, pre-K three years, and grades one, two, three, four, five, etc. So if I want to just pull out any of them that whose names begin with the string grade, I can use this. Let's give that a try. And we did indeed get grade pre-K three year, pre-K four year, grade K one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if the resulting tibble has more columns than are easily shown on a screen, then it basically says uh, there's more columns down here and it doesn't attempt to show them all on the single screen. Uh, if we wanted to, of course, we could assign the output of the select operation into uh, a new tibble, and then we would be able to do other operations on that tibble at some time later on. One thing that, that I didn't mention was that uh, if you want to know the options that are available for a particular uh, function, you can put question mark and then the name of the function. And one of the tabs that we have not used before, which is the help tab, will give you information about a particular function. So here we see the select function. It's a part of the diplyr package. And there's a description. It shows you what arguments you should put in, what kind of values and then uh, it provides you also with some examples on how to use the function. So if you want to know all the different ways that you can use the select function, this is an easy way to find it.